Look how all these different agents are working in this one interface. Choosing the bank statement and analyze statement. Now you can see financial statistics. Cursor just raised 2.3 billion in Series D funding. The top AI code editor for now. Cursor 2.0 introducing Composer first agent model and it is topping the list. It's specifically built for agent. So you got the agents mode and the regular code editor. You can ask it to do anything with multiple models. You can choose as many number of models as you like. For the same task, it's going to create your application with various different versions. And you can see the comparison and you can review all that in one place and finalize your result. As simple as that. And you got a built-in browser where you can preview your application, choose the elements, ask any fixes or improvements and it can automatically do that for you. That is Cursor 2.0. And we are going to explore all of these options. Check out the integrated agents. Create a bank statement analyzer app. We'll see how you can test this application. Deploy in Google Cloud. Automate your Terraform and Kubernetes just by using this agent. Also, I'll show you how you can monitor your application such as Kubernetes directly using this agent. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. I really like this Composer model and it's four times faster. Create an application in a fly and in the chart, it's nearly topping the list. And it's the first coding model from Cursor. Multi-agent interface is also really nice. So in this version, you can see a clear difference between editor and agents. At the top left, you got the editor. That's where you got the files as before. But this agents mode is dedicated for agents. So I can ask it to do any task. I'm going to say create an AI powered application which can automatically provide insights when we provide our bank statement and for improvements. It should accept Excel, PDF or document format, a front end and a back end, a full fledged application with the database. So clicking send. Now it's writing the to do list from the to do list. It's automatically creating the required files. You can see that all the steps it followed and finally it's completed. Now I can say run the application so I can view it. Now it's running the application after installing all the required packages. It's testing it's working. Now it started the server so I can click this URL. So clicking it and here is the application. So I can upload any of these files to analyze my bank statement. I've got the bank statement here. So going to upload it. Now it's uploaded analyzing statement. Now I got an error. Now the issue with any AI application is that you need proper testing before publishing it. That's when we have test sprite. You can enable MCP tools in cursor to get this running. It is built for modern coders, the AI agent that tests, fixes and validates your software. Fully automated testing agent in your IDE. So in the same application, I'm going to say first test this application. So I asked to test it using test sprite. So I just need to choose what to test. So you can test your backend or frontend. For now, I'm going to choose backend. The code base, no authentication required. Here you can see it's running in port number 8000. So you can include that here. You can also upload your readme file or product file. To get that, you got the old editor mode. At the top, click editor and you can see all the files here. So we got the project structure and quick start guide and readme here. So I'm going to open the readme file. So choosing the readme and clicking continue. Now I can proceed. So here in the agents panel, you can see it automatically reviewing the readme file and started creating all the test script, which I don't need to create anything. This automatically creates and saves the test report in a centralized dashboard that is test price own dashboard. And you can get started for free. So I'm going to sign in. So here you can see my test is running right now so I can open it. So the health check status is pass supported file formats that is a fail endpoint handles files with no transaction failed so you can see it automatically generates different use cases and creating the code so here you can see the code written to test the endpoint and we got the test results right in our test pride dashboard and we got the test report here so now I can just pass this test report 
saying add test report, fix all these errors. Also, I'm going to provide my OpenAI API key in the .env file. So clicking on that. So if you go to the editor, you can create a .env file and add your OpenAI API key here. For this, go to platform.openai.com. There you can generate your API key, creating one and save that in the .env file. Now you can see automatically all the errors are getting fixed. Now all the fix got applied. So now we are going to test the application. So again, opening the file, choosing the bank statement and analyze statement. Now you can see financial statistics, total transactions, total credits, total debits, net flow. And here are the insights. Consider reducing spending, monitor your spending regularly, set up budget categories, review recurring expenses. That is really nice. Thanks to TestBright for sponsoring this video. So we have created a bank statement AI analyzer. So I can even publish this, keep it behind a login, and I can literally tell this AI agent to get that implemented. And if you want to check your files from this agent's mode, so click on the top right hand corner, the primary sidebar, and you can see all the files here. Now, if I want to publish this application, I can directly publish into various cloud providers. So I want to deploy that in Google Cloud. So I'm going to say, give me all required file or secret key to deploy this application to Google Cloud. That's it. Just a simple statement. And it's creating me all the required files. Cloud build, app.yaml, git ignore, cloud run files, all the required secrets and the deployment plan. Now I've got a detailed deployment plan. So only three things required, a Google Cloud account, open AI API key and install Google Cloud CLI. So first two steps, we need to do it. Third step, it can do itself. So once after creating the Google Cloud account, I'm going to say publish it now using Google Cloud CLI and open AI API key is in .env file and clicking enter. And now it's building the required Docker file. First, it will ask for authentication with Google Cloud. And now you can see the application is running in this endpoint. As simple as that to publish any application in Google Cloud. You can see the bank statement analyzer deployed in Google Cloud. That is Cloud Run. And here's the API endpoint. That is really nice. Now I want to delete this application. Delete from Cloud Run and publish it in Kubernetes cluster using Terraform code and clicking enter. Previously, to perform this task, it'll take days because I've been working in DevOps for more than 10 years, apart from my regular programming and AI work. So creating all these files will take days to verify, to test, to deploy. And you can see in seconds, it's getting generated and you can see the speed of generation. So this isn't possible previously, but now it's all possible and all the Terraform code is ready now. You can see the main file, variables file, outputs file, everything ready. Now let's deploy this. I'm going to say you deploy it for me in Kubernetes. So the reason why we use Kubernetes so that we can customize our deployment and make it capable of handling large amount of workloads for large sites. And there are many other advantages for Kubernetes cluster. Even the cloud run, which we just ran, is running in Kubernetes. So if we can directly manage Kubernetes, we can customize. So it's creating all the VPC, artifacts registry, compute network, and it's applying my Terraform, Terraform apply. This speed of deployment isn't possible previously. Within just few minutes, I deployed in Cloud Run and now created all the required Terraform files and deploying that in Kubernetes cluster. Previously, I created a video about migrating from GCP, GKE to AWS EKS. GCP Kubernetes cluster to AWS Kubernetes cluster. And I followed loads of steps and all these done manually. But now I can quickly do this within just a few minutes. Also, I explained about the whole deployment process in detail in another video, which I'll put the link in the description below. The Kubernetes cluster is still getting created and you can see here. And this is from Google site. When creating this, it'll take a few minutes. In Google Cloud, I can see under Kubernetes engine, here it's getting created, the number of nodes, bank statement cluster prod. Now it's doing some health checks. 
now the application got deployed in Google Cloud Kubernetes cluster and I can see the pods, the services and the application endpoints. So let's open this endpoint and see if our application got deployed and we have successfully deployed our application and you can see bank statement AI analyzer deployed in Kubernetes cluster all done with this one agentic system and also with cursor one it makes the work super fast now I'm going to ask destroy the whole application which you have created just one line and it's running terraform destroy to delete the whole application as simple as that now you understand the point and also I want to show you one more thing how you can analyze or optimize your existing Kubernetes cluster or any application which you have deployed in your cloud. I'm going to take one as an example. Already I got MySQL running. My website sometimes drops. So we are going to identify the issue and optimize that just by chatting. Previously, the same task will take a whole day for me to identify the issue and optimize it. But now within minutes, let's try that. So in this, I'm going to ask, check my MySQL pod from my Kubernetes cluster to the agent and clicking send, planning for the next moves, finding the information about the pod, reading all those details, and then describing the pod, getting more information about the pod, getting the logs, getting the service, and finally it's giving me the status. If you are doing manually all these steps with all these commands, that is tedious. Check resource usage for my PHP pods in the last one day because I saw my website going down so just double checking it and fixing the error so it's going through step by step checking the status that is the memory usage checking the limits CPU and memory usage and here's my detailed breakdown you can see CPU usage this much memory usage and this much so based on this I can ask for optimization strategy my site was going down sometimes so give me optimization strategy it's analyzing my existing status and is writing me the optimization strategy and here is the php pod optimization strategy it's asking me to increase cpu limits optimize readiness probe hpa scaling behavior so if i want to implement this i can just say implement this strategy now it's reading the content and now it's writing all the steps and implementing the strategy it's increasing all the cpu limits and patching the deployment and verifying if everything is done properly by using a kubed ctl get command. Implementation complete, CPU target, memory target, CPU limit, CPU request, everything got optimized just within a minute. That is a power. To enable multi-agents, which will automatically bring a cycle agent count here, first you need to initialize your git. So let's go to our terminal. So inside our terminal, I need to type git init and then click enter. That will automatically initialize as a git repo. That will enable this multi-agent mode. So now I'm going to ask implement login for this application. And I'm going to start four agents at a time. I can even use custom model for each agent. So for Composer, I can have one agent. For Sonnet 4.5, I can have one agent. Then GPT 5.1 fast, I can have one agent. Next, Gemini 2.5 Flash and Grok 4 Fast. So I'm going to start with these four models and these all models, that is four different agents, going to work and implement this login for the application. So these agents are going to work in their own individual work tree. So at the end, I can merge that together or choose whatever I like. I can even ask it to work locally. With local setup, you can't add multiple agent. You need Git repo that will automatically enable the work tree. So now going with this models and clicking send. Now here you can see all these models working under different work tree. Work tree is similar to branch, but in its own dedicated folder. So now you can see these tasks got completed. So I can go through the implementation for each of this agent. Gemini 2.5 flash got canceled. So I'm going to review by clicking this review icon. So here you can see the changes. So this is for Grok4 fast. Similarly for each agent, you got different set of files to review. So I can apply one of the agents work and I can ask it to run, run this now. So just right clicking on it and show preview, which opens in its own browser. 
So here you can see username and password. So I'm going to enter the username and password, demo and login. Now we've got the response here, login successfully. You may now analyze your statements. So that is really nice. Now I can go back to my agent mode. Now if I want to preview Grok for fast, I can click that. Then I can click apply all. For now I can ignore my current changes. Now this model created its own page for login and that is really nice. Similarly, you can compare between various different models and choose whatever you like. To work with these all agents, you might need to get an understanding of what this work tree is all about. So it's similar to branching, but with its dedicated folder. So I'm going to open the URL and it's opening directly within cursor. And when I click on this icon and show preview, I can see the preview of the application right inside cursor. One feature is that I should be able to select the items here in this browser, but for some reason, I'm not able to do that. If you know that, do let me know in the comments below. Considering you already like to build AI application, I also created another video which explains you step by step how you can test the application using TestSprite before publishing it in production. I'll put the link in here and I highly recommend for you to watch and I will see you there.